T-Rex I S M R Hi guys and welcome back to T-Rex I S M R Let's see what's going on I had messages waiting to be played you have three messages. Hey, Collard, it's me, your favorite editor. Uh, guess what? I'm gonna give you a second chance. I need somebody to write the TV column. Pays lousy, so what's new? If you're interested, drop by the office. In fact, drop by the office anyway. We have to talk, Nico. That story of yours I spiked. It won't go away. You've made some dangerous enemies out there. Hey, Nico, it's your old pal. I, I mean, your new pal, George. Whoa, Ireland. <laughs> it's a whole different country. And I got some amazing news for you. Gem of a story, in fact. Oh, oh. Gotta go. Yeah, fella here's got a drink lined up for me. See you tomorrow, Nico. Slonsha. Yep, only here for a day and I'm speaking the lingo like a local. Panos al Coulard, this is Imelda Carchon. I wanted to thank you for being so understanding when... Come to lunch, why don't you? Tomorrow. I might have more news. There's a Monsieur Merlon coming to see me this evening. He says he knows why Pierre was murdered. In fact, he'll be here shortly. I shall let you know what he says. Goodbye, dear girl. Till tomorrow. Merlin? My God. Merlin's the killer. I'd better get over there and mourn her now. When it came to being two-faced, Imelda was up there with the best. I owed her nothing. But I couldn't just let her die. Hmm. Well, that was just by chance. I arrived to find the Palais Royal courtyard deserted. I only hoped that I'd beaten the assassin here. I had to warn Imelda before it was too late. I genuinely don't remember this. Okay, Imelda in danger. Three messages on my answer machine. My editor very worried about the story. George calling from Ireland, drunk. And finally, Imelda Carshon. She said that a man called Merlin is visiting her for dinner tonight. That's Khan, the costume killer. She's in terrible danger. I have to go and warn her. Oh my days, I do not remember this at all. That broken window looked like the best way in. What do you think? Let's go and try the door. intercom system wasn't working. Bad sign. Somebody had cut the wire. Locked? No way was I going to break through a door like that. Stop it's so funny. I'm about to be cured. I unhooked the first wire. I don't know. Could do that. Fixed tight, presumably to stop critics stealing it. Who else would want to? What do you see? I released the second wire. Even with both wires removed, the statue remained upright. Oh, we'll have to give it a bit of a push, Nico. I'm guessing. If I could deconstruct this, I could deconstruct anything. Absolutely perfect. Oh, gosh. Broken Sword 2 is definitely my favourite. Broken Sword 2. The plastic sheet was thick and strong. I'd need more than my hands to tear it. No. Oh, I don't know. Oh, come on. Really? Oh, I bet she's dead. I really don't remember this. Oh, she's. 
My God, I'm too late. The light on. It's a bit dark. Imelda. Oh no. Nico, don't worry. You're going to be all right. You know that isn't true. It was Merlin, wasn't it? Dressed as a cavalier. Absurd. You came to warn me, didn't you? I must be crazy. Let me see you, Nico. All this time you were just using me. Which one is the real Imelda? You are an extraordinary girl. Thierry would have been so proud of you. You didn't know my father. So like him. Something about the eyes. I wish we'd had time to get to know each other. She was gone. She cheated me, lied to me, used me. But why? Why indeed? So next, now that's turned to die. Another murder by the costume killer, Merlin. All gone. This time dressed as a cavalier. The police want to investigate. I'll just screw it up as I've covered up all the other killings. Can I put the light on? Climbing up the fireplace would be futile. I wasn't planning on it, but okay. For some reason, I can't turn the light on. Even in death, Imelda looked the same. Beautiful, inscrutable. The Ice Queen alone in her ice palace. I opened it. Inside was a tiny gold key. I took the key. I had to leave. I knew I could never return. Probably shouldn't have taken that key though, I mean. We got back here first. Nice. Nice, nice. In the dim light, I caught the reflection of something metallic. A small, sinister-looking metal disc had been tucked under my father's box. It was a bug. You don't scare me. Asbestos. The box was carved by my father. It never had a key. The elephant on the lid was a perfect match to Cochon's. We've got the key now, dear. Let's see what's I took out the key. I couldn't believe it. Imelda's key opened my father's box. I dreaded what I was going to find inside. It was a photograph of Imelda. But why here? In my father's box? I felt as if a black hole had swallowed me up. Imelda and Carchon grinning. While behind them a village was being razed to the ground. Its people butchered. And there, next to them, staring out at me across the years, my own father. There was a letter. I feared there was even worse to come. Hotel Saint Georges, Algiers, Friday. My darling Thierry, by the time you read this, you'll be safely out of Africa. You need not fear. Pierre and the organization do not know who you are really working for, or about us. Did you think I would betray you? I could not. You wanted me to leave him, but I don't have your courage. I know too much of what has been going on here. They would find me and they would kill us both. Enjoy your life in Paris, Thierry. Your life of honor, of patriotic duty. Do they give medals to spies? No, they'll just give you a funny job in an embassy somewhere. I could never share that with you. Imagine me, a diplomat's wife. 
So I must stay here with Pierre, the two of us bound together by what we have done to this country. Au revoir, my love. You will be in my heart until I die. Emilda. Suddenly everything made sense. My father had been working undercover for the government. He was one of the good guys after all. He and Imelda must have fallen in love. She'd found out who he really was, so he had to leave. It had broken her heart, but she had never revealed it to anyone. I knew I couldn't either. Whatever he was doing, he'd had good reason to keep it secret. I decided I would respect that and tell nobody. Nico. I knew it was George. For a moment I was tempted to pretend that I was out. Or ask him to go away and come back later. But then... Come in. Hello, George. What? What? So, where did you stay last night? At McDevitt's. I got to drinking with Doyle and a couple of the guys. That explains why you look so ill today. Did you get any sleep at all? Not much. I had to share the room with another guy. Did he snow? Hardly. He was dead. Then Leary woke me in the middle of the night to help bail out the cellar. The cellar was flooded? Yeah. Some idiot had left the faucet running. And you say P. Graham has disappeared? Without a trace. But my visit wasn't a complete waste of time. P. Graham's gem? The Templar's gem. Whoever Jacques Marquet is, He's in for a disappointment. Jacques Marquet? He's the guy who should have collected the gem from Fitzgerald. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. Montfaucon. Let's take another look at the manuscript. There's a guy with a sword and a bull. Between them is a gem supported by a tripod. I can't remember if you have to look at this too. There's a woman looking at her reflection in a mirror, but the reflection has three hideous faces. A knight with a crystal ball. The knight scroll bears a phrase in Latin. Through my teachings, you will be enlightened. There's a guy working on a loom. Look there, two guys on the same horse. What are your plans? I want to find out who, what, or where Montfaucon was. All I've got to go by is the name and a picture of a hanged man. Do you want to look after the gem? No, Georges. I'd be too tempted to sell it. That's fair enough. What am I gonna do? I can't sit here all day, much as I'd like to. Okay. Don't forget to look for Lobinot at the Kron Museum. And why don't you see if Rosso has heard anything? Okay. Anything else I can do for you while I'm out? Shopping, a trip to the laundromat? Just take care of yourself. Oh, George. I think we will try. I so much wanted to talk to George about everything that had happened, but I knew I never could. My father's connection to Africa would have to remain a secret forever. His bravery would be known only to the government and to me. Revealing it would just damage his memory. People would take the story and twist it. Before long, he would be the villain and Carchon would be the hero. I know how they do that. I'm a journalist. It's very true. Not much has changed. Need to find 
hear what Mom Paul's life is all about. Something to do with the hanging man. And I need to find out more about the mysterious Marco. Sergeant Moo? Uh, yes. Do you know a man named Khan? He's a shifty looking guy with a scar on his left cheek. No, monsieur. He also calls himself Thomas Merlin. I'm sorry, monsieur Stobart. I don't know him. Has this man any connection with the bombing of the cafe? Yes. I believe Khan was the name he used when he hired the clown costume. Have you heard of a man called Marquet? Yes. He used to be known as the Mole of Mamad. I heard he's been hospitalized, probably by one of his rivals. Which hospital was Marquet taken to? The Agenmeyer Clinic in the Avenue des Hérissons. Okay. Why was Marquet known as the Mole of Montmartre? Because he lived in Montmartre, I suppose. Yeah, but why the Mole? I don't know. Maybe he ruined people's lawns. I'd like to report an assault. Yes, monsieur? Where is the victim? I'm the victim. I've been harassed by a pair of thugs. I see. And where did this alleged assault take place? Outside the Hotel Ubu. They stopped me as I was leaving and went through my pockets. Could you describe the suspects, monsieur? One looked like a gorilla, and the other looked like a weasel. Their names are Flap and Guido. Oh, I'll get them this time. I was one of the last people to see the victim alive, Sergeant. Does that worry you? Yes, it does. I feel I kind of... I owe it to him to find his killer. That is best left to the authorities, monsieur. Did he speak to you? Tell you anything? No. He just grinned and nodded. Don't let it trouble you, monsieur. Go home and try to forget. I know the identity of the dead guy. His name was Plantow. Is that so? You knew him, did you? No, but... We'll know everything there is to know about him soon enough. I'm trying to be helpful here. The best way you can help us is to go home, monsieur. Hmm. No way. Uh, no. Does this matchbook mean anything to you, Sergeant? That's a double-line Swedish with a crosshatch Bergman strike strip. Now, that's unusual. Pre-war Anderson hinging. Really? I haven't seen a reinforced Anderson outside of a private collection. It's rare, then? In this part of the world, yes. There are only three places these are made. Taiwan, Manila, and Slough. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, monsieur. It's the guy who bombed the cafe. The clown. This man looks nothing like a clown. He's taken off his grease paint and costume. Then there is nothing to link this man with the killing. Nothing? Look at those murderous eyes. Hmm. Hardly likely to get him convicted. Very true. Okay, so where's Russell? See you later, Sergeant. Markets. How did I say it? Mark Market. That's what we call it. Markets in the local hospital. Head right there. Oh, head right up there. I'm losing all this. I remember a vacuum cleaner. I think you have to look a vacuum cleaner. Hi. My name's George Stobart. Really? If you wish to make an appointment, see the receptionist. Rude. I'm looking for a guy named Jacques Marquet. In which department does he work? He doesn't. He's a patient. I see. You do realize there are strict policies regarding visiting hours, don't you? This is important. I have to talk to Marquet urgently. We make no exceptions to the rules. It's a matter of life and death. 
The well-oiled running of this hospital is a matter of life and death. That's why we have rules. I think I ought to warn you that Marquet is not what he seems. Explain yourself. He's in league with a bunch of guys who want to take over the world. Nonsense. Besides, Marquet's employers have paid in advance for one of our most exclusive private rooms. Could you tell me who Marquet's employers are? Certainly not. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, sir, I do not. May I have the honor of shaking you by the hand? You may not. I don't encourage physical contact between my staff. Okay, try it. Thanks for your help. Stop to this lady. Excuse me. Yes, sir? Is this the Hagenmeyer Clinic? That's correct. I thought I was in a garden center. Oh, the plans. They were my idea. A little greenery to evoke the spirit of nature. How may I help you? I'm here to see Jacques Marquet. Oh, yes. Are you related to our client, sir? Yeah, I'm his uh, long-lost brother. A brother half his age with a different name and an American accent. Yeah, people always say that. I blame Mom. We were separated at an early age after a mix-up in the nursery at the Oakland shopping mall. I've never heard anything so ridiculous in all my life. I guess not. So, do I get to see Marquet before the funeral? That attitude will get you nowhere. My instructions were quite clear. No one gets to see Marquet. So, unless you can prove you're a relative or a close acquaintance, you're wasting your time here. Has Marquet been visited by a man in a clown costume? Oh, no. You haven't seen a man in disguise? Well, there's Theodore the Bear. <laughs> he comes every Thursday to entertain the children. Personally, I think he scares them half to death in that crummy old bear suit. If I was stuck on my back with tubes in every orifice, he's the last person I'd want to see. That's so cold Has Marquet had a visit from a pair of gangsters? I should hope not. Can you describe them? A thin guy who looks like a weasel <laughs> and his friend, the gorilla. Sounds as if they escaped from the zoo. Have you seen this man here at the clinic? No, sir. And I never forget a face. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. It was the card I'd found in the hotel bedroom. It read, Thomas Merlin, Gruber Electronics Corporation. Excuse me. Yes, sir? Look at this ID pass. So you're Merlin. Marquet has been asking for you. For me? Yes. He was shouting your name when they brought him in here. Now, let me see. He was on Ward B12, as I recall. Oh, he's being transferred to... Oh, dear. He's on Ward J2. That's... Nurse Grendel's ward. What's so bad about Nurse Grendel? She runs that ward like a South American prison. Keeping a well-disciplined <laughs> ward isn't a crime, is it? Well-disciplined? In the discipline and punishment stakes, she'd whip the butt off the Marquis de Sade. Everything, I mean everything, is done to a strict routine. Six o'clock, alarm call. Six ten, bowel movement, and woe betide anyone who doesn't have a result. Those patients of hers are like Pavlova's dogs. She sounds like a real nightmare. And then some. If Nurse Grendel is that bad, how come the authorities tolerate her? She's like part of the furniture. I was beginning to get the picture. This woman was jealous, with a big green capital J. Mm -hmm. How do I find Nurse Grendel's ward? 
Stay on the corridor on the left. Turn right at the senior consultant's washroom. Right again at the executive coffee lounge. Bear left past the administrator's sauna. And turn left at the end. That's J2. And good luck. Thanks for your help, ma'am. You're welcome. Okay. Soon. As I turned the corner, I saw the source of the hellish noise which echoed through the corridors. It was an industrial polishing machine with an odd-looking guy in tow. Hello. What's that? I said, hello. Oh, hiya. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. That's what I thought you said. Don't look so down in the mouth. No matter how bad things seem, I never let life get on top of me. Oh, yeah? What's your secret? Why, it's easy. All you have to do is smile and whistle this little tune. You know what? If you start whistling, I'll bust you in the teeth. <laughs> it's a deal. Do you know where I'd find a patient called Marquet? No, I'm not allowed on the wards with Mr. Shiny. Yeah. Have you seen any unsavory characters lurking about in the quarters? No, sir, I haven't. But I've got nothing to worry about. What's that, Mr. Shiny? You'd take good care of the rascals, I'll bet you would. With a friend like him, I've no fear of oppressors. It must be a great comfort. He is. Would Mr. Shiny be your polishing machine by any chance? Please, don't call him that. He's more of a friend than a machine. I've had Mr. Shiny for three years, and he's never let me down once. How come you got so attached to a polishing machine? I asked you not to call him that. He's got a name, you know. Uh, yeah, Mr. Shiny. It's just that... You think it's odd, don't you? I don't mind. The rest of the staff think I'm twisted. I heard them snorking behind me back when I gave Mr. Shiny his weekly pull through. Hello. See you later. Yeah, take care now. <clears throat> hey now, you can't go in there. How come? I'm responsible for the contents of that cupboard. As I tugged the plug out of the socket, the polishing machine coughed, spluttered, and died. Oh, Mr. Shiny. Mr. Shiny, what's wrong, pal? This is what why 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 go all the way around there? Why not just go? Good afternoon, Doctor. Oh, hi. Is this Ward J2? Yes, sir. The patients are ready for your inspection, Doctor. Uh, thank you, nurse. You'll need this, Doctor. Oh, man, I can't remember this bit. She gave me a long, narrow metal box and a stunning smile. Thanks. Uh, could you take a look at the client in bed number three now? His name is Eric Sopmarsh. Do you have a patient named Marquet on this ward? Oh, oui, monsieur. He is in the private room at the end of the ward. He has been placed in strict isolation. Why is Marquet in quarantine? If you wish to know more, you'll have to speak to Herr Hagenmeier. All I know is that Marquet's room is strictly out of bounds. Do you know who paid for Marquet's room? No, of course I don't. Preferential treatment like that must cost an arm and a leg. That's not my concern, monsieur. Hmm. 
Do you have any clowns on the ward? Why, yes, we do. A professional clown. I'll bet he lightens the place up. Mm. Hardly. Oh. Monsieur Boissy has been in a coma for the last three months. Oh. What's wrong with Boissy? He was involved in a very nasty accident. A silly stunt involving a unicycle. His current condition is due to post-traumatic shock. It's unlikely he'll ever perform as a clown again. It's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. What is this device? It's for taking the patient's blood pressure, doctor. You should know this. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. Oh. So cold. That's better. It was so cold. Okay. So who's this guy? Hello? Anybody home? Who are you? My name is Dr. Stobart, and I'm here to steer you down the rocky road to recovery. Dr. Monroe said there was no cure for what I've got. Your problem is you stayed in bed too long. Are you sure you're a qualified doctor? You better believe it. I'm going to take your blood pressure. Why? I'm a doctor. It's my job. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. What's your impression of Nurse Grendel? She's a very efficient young woman. Efficient? You make her sound like a vacuum cleaner. I've no complaints. Oh. <laughs> I'm not even gonna say anything to her. What can you tell me about Marquet? He's the man in the private room, isn't he? That room was mine before I was tossed out like a common squatter. Do you know what's wrong with Marquet? They won't even say what's wrong with me. Tell me, Doctor. What's your opinion? Uh, it's too early to say. But I've been here for three months. I'll come back later. Mm. Pardon me, nurse. Oui, monsieur. Do you want this, uh... Device for measuring blood pressure? Yeah. Do you want it back? No, thank you. Thank you, nurse. Au revoir, monsieur. Mm. Doctor! What is it? You haven't taken my blood pressure. <coughs> so we can really try to think of what I need to do. It's been a long time since I played this. Seems fine to me. You're not doing it right. Of course I am. No, you're not. Dr. Monroe never did it like that. I can't take a satisfactory reading while you're excited like this. Excited. I'll come back later. Mm, Monroe, something at the beginning. Monroe. Who's this guy? Who's that guy? Excuse me, sir. Aha! Just the man. You must be the new boy. Uh, yeah, I must be. Well, uh, stop wandering about and make yourself useful. Bernie, come here, boy. This is Benoit, my nephew. Can I trust you to look after him? He is fresh out of medical school. It will open his eyes to see a real doctor on the job. How bad. Show him around. <laughs> Let him see some of you. Talk snowy so loud. Oh my goodness. Okay. So let's... Hi. It's me again. I'll come back later. That's... Hi. <laughs> my name's George Stobart. Yes, sir. So what's your name, kid? Benoit. They call me Bunny. Bunny? 
Jeez, and you don't mind? Well, I've gotten used to it. Okay, Benoit, you're gonna help me. Anything you say, sir. It's fair enough. Do you know anything about a patient named Marquet? Uh, no, sir, I don't know much about any of the patients. I've never met a doctor who admits that he's only human. Uh, I'm only a trainee, sir. I'm sure I'll get the hang of things. Here, take this pressure gauge. Thank you, sir. Uh, what do you want me to do with it? Well, keep it safe until I think of something. Follow me, Benoit. I'm right behind you, sir. Oh. Hi, me again. Oh I'll come back later. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try it. I can't think of anything else to do apart from talk. You haven't finished taking my blood pressure. You keep quiet? You're disturbing the other patients. I'll keep quiet when you've taken my blood pressure properly. I have to see Jacques Marquet first. How come he gets preferential treatment? It's because he's got money, isn't it? I'll come back when you've dealt with that chip on your shoulder. Oh, come on. Hey, Benoit. Yes, sir? Yes. Do you still have that gauge I gave you? Oh, yes. Yeah. What do you want me to do with it? Use it on Eric's sock marsh. Okay. Bonjour, Doctor. I'm scared to see Doc. Have you heard of a guy called Marquet? He's in quarantine, Doc. Right behind this ear door. Marquet is just the man I wanted to see. I wouldn't go in there if I was you. He had anthrax. I have to visit my patient. What for? Routine. I have to check he's still breathing. What if he's not? I'll sign the certificate and register his bed as vacant. That's a cold and distant attitude to death. Well, I've been institutionalized to the point of godlike aloofness. The white coat suits you. Thanks. Have you seen any suspicious characters on the ward? Yeah, I have. A gorilla and a weasel? No. <laughs> this was a tatty old bear. How's the bear acting suspiciously? Well... He was wearing a homburg. Is that against the law? No, but it's pretty weird for a bear. Do you recognize the man in this photograph? No, I have never seen him before. <laughs> Are you Thomas Merlin of Gruber Electronics? No. Then you won't be needing this. <laughs> oh, jeez. Would you like to shake hands? What for? As a gesture of goodwill. On reflection, no. Catch you later, officer. Au revoir, Doc. Oh. Okay. Jeez. Marquet? Yes. I am Marquet. I've been expecting you. You have? Well, what are you waiting for? Get it over with. I just want to know what I should do with the gem. The Lamar gem? Yeah, right here in my pocket. Oh, oh, I thought you were one of the assassin. <laughs> Not me. I never inhaled. So, you were sent in my place? Uh, yeah. You could hardly make the trip to Ireland in your condition. What should I do with the gem? Deliver it to the Grand Master. Quickly tell him that I have found the tripod <laughs> right here in Paris. You have it? Not yet, but it's been taken care of. I, I am a couple of stooges with a flair for petty crime. Would that be Flap and Guido by any chance? You 
you, no them as for Klausner. Uh, he has gone off to Syria on a wild goose chase. They have geese in Syria? He, he uh, has a theory about the location of the... Uh, uh, That's enough excitement for one day, Monsieur Marquet. What are you doing here? Talking to this patient, of course. Monsieur Marquet is my patient. If Herr Hagenmeier was to hear that... Okay, I'm going. I'd learned all I could from Marquet anyhow. Well, there you are, sir. I was just coming to look for you. I finished with your pressure gauge. Thanks, Bunny. What that noise? It sounds as if someone's having a cardiac arrest. It's all right. The doctor's in there with him. Are you sure he was a doctor? Oui, monsieur. He showed me his ID. It was Dr. Braille. There's no Dr. Braille working here. He's an imposter! Mm. The door's locked. Help me, officer. Stand back, monsieur. Hello, George. I found Jacques Marquet. Did he talk? Yeah, he talked. For the very last time. He's dead? Yeah. Killed in cold blood by a bogus doctor. That's despicable. What kind of guy would pass himself off as a doctor and take advantage of a dying man? Was it Khan? No. I don't know who he was, but it certainly wasn't Khan. He got away, out the window. Have you ever heard of the Hashi Ashin? No. Marquet said that they were his biggest enemy. His biggest enemy was the bogus doctor. Good point. That guy was evil. He had wild, staring eyes like a dead fish. I'll never trust a doctor again. Dead fish. Do you think the assassin was responsible for killing Marquet? I don't think so. He could have finished him off the first time. Besides, Marquet would have recognized him. He was pumped to the gills with sedatives. He wouldn't have recognized the four horsemen of the apocalypse unless they'd introduced themselves. Okay. I guess I'd better go back and talk to that weirdo. Which one? Rosso or Sergeant Lou? Oh, but you're referring to Andre. I'll let you work it out. Right. Mark, I thought I was some sort of assassin. Seeing someone is trying to stop him reforging the sword. He wanted me to deliver the gem to some guy called the Grand Master. Marquis said there was two thugs from the hotel who tried to steal the tripod. He also mentioned someone called Klausner, who, who the assassin might have followed to Syria. Very confusing. But before I could get any explanation, I was ordered out by a doctor, who wasn't a real doctor because they then murdered Marquis. These people certainly don't mess around. So we'll save it there. I'm going to save you on a different save because I seem to be having a lot of trouble recording and editing and stuff. So I'll confirm that. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time for the next part of Broken Sword on the Using Dragon.